Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and I'm gonna make an uh, I'm here make talking about another new video and another new revision video specifically. So today I'm gonna be talking about how to revise maths effectively and this has been a big issue for a lot of my friends. Maths is one of those subjects which you either get it first time because you're naturally gifted or you don't really get it and you have to work hard for it if you want to get the good marks. Now luckily enough for me I'm quite gifted in the maths field so I, subjects like maths and physics I get quite easily and I find that a lot of my friends who aren't naturally gifted in maths are struggling a lot with revision at the moment. I think that the best way to revise for maths really for me is to practice. Now Everyone dreads practicing maths because maths is one of those things which you have to repeat and repeat and repeat. And it gets on a lot of people's nerves because they feel like when they repeat it or they practice it and they get it wrong, they don't know why they've got it wrong. Or if they get it right, they find it boring. That Why do they have to keep practicing it? There's a lot of issues with the ways you revise maths. And I just want to try and clear that up and help people to see that maths, when you revise it properly and when you revise it effectively, is not that bad. So as I said before, the number one tip to practice in maths that I've known throughout my um, Key Stage 3, leading up to my GCSEs, even doing maths challenge, practice, practice, practice. Now I do Edexcel for maths and Edexcel is a really hard example at the moment in terms of the new GCSEs that we're getting. So I would suggest that um, you buy some of the workbooks that they've put out. They have different graded workbooks. So they have a grade 9 workbook. They have a general grade um, grades workbook. They have a grade 7 and a grade 5 workbook as well. Um, I say you either look, um, look it up on the website or go through the school and try and get these textbooks. Or you can even get... I got my grade 9 textbook in Waterstones. Um, you could just go to any shop really and... Just have a look. Any good shop that sells textbooks, they'll probably have it in there. Once you've got a textbook or a workbook or a revision guide, you want to go through what they're telling you and then do the questions over and over. Now, obviously, if you get the questions right first time, then you know you're doing something right. But if you get the questions wrong, you want to be able to go back and find your mistakes in the question. Once you've found your mistakes, you want to know where you've gone wrong and make sure you revise the, t the topics from the questions in which you got wrong. So, for example, I found for myself that the topic of probability is one of that I really, really struggle with. Algebra and transforming graphs and algebraic manipulation and all that jazz, I find that so easy. Like, that for me is really my strong point. But when it comes to more number-based or pro probability, such as like conditional probability, Venn diagrams, I suck at it. So when I do those questions, I most of the time get them wrong, and I have to go back and look where I went wrong. So for example, if I was doing a Venn diagram question, I may have looked at the variables wrong and then inputted the wrong numbers, or something like that. You want to be able to go back, track back, and find out where you went wrong, and then revise those topics the most, because they're the ones you clearly either don't know or struggle with. So my main piece of advice for this one is to just go back to the topics that you struggle with the most, and revise those thoroughly because those are the ones that you'll be thanking yourself for revising in the exam when a question like that comes up. Secondly, I would say that doing past papers is amazing. If you really want to revise effectively for maths, you have to be able to do past papers and time yourself as well doing those past papers. How long do the questions take you? Um, which ones did you find difficult in the exam, etc, etc. So there are two ways you can go about this. You can either do the past paper in the time limit given by the exam. So if the time limit, I know for my exam is an hour and a half for the new papers, so I would give myself an hour and a half, sit down at home or in the library preferably, and do the past paper and see how far I get. Secondly, what you could do is you could just do the paper and then not time yourself and see how long it takes you. Method one is good for seeing how far you can get through the paper, um, doing the questions slowly so you make sure you understand them and seeing where you get up to so you know what you need to work on so you can get faster. Method two is good for accuracy, so if you're looking to get all the questions right in your own time, then method two is the way to go. Personally, I prefer method one because I think that an hour and a half is more than enough time for me to do a whole paper. 
but a lot of people will prefer method two in case they want to know where they've gone wrong or just take a bit more time to understand the questions and know that they're getting them right. To sum up my second piece of advice, I'd really just say past papers are the way to go. Finally, I just want to say that I know a lot of people neglect this, but use your teachers. Your teachers are there for a reason. Your math teachers don't just teach you a lesson and then tell you to buzz off. Like, you can, if you don't understand a topic, if you don't understand a question, I really haven't ever met a math teacher that has turned me down saying, when I go after the lesson, I'm like, Miss or Sir, I really didn't get this, can you please explain it to me again? If your teachers do do that, then they're terrible teachers, to be honest with you, but... Yeah, just use your teachers, because that's what they're there for. They want to help you, and they want to give you advice. And even if you feel shy about going to your teachers, ask someone who's fairly good at maths as well, because those people seem to have, like, some next mind that happens to work things out really well, really quickly. And you can actually pick up a few tips and tricks from them as well. So to sum up that point, I'd say use your teachers, because they're there to help you, and they're there to, you know, make sure that you can succeed. I said finally for the last point, but actually finally... One thing that would really help, especially in these new GCSEs, not really sure for the old example, but for these new GCSEs, learn your formulas. Oh my god. The amount of people that do not know formulas is shocking. I've had people who don't know the formulas for area of a right angle triangle. That is like, not okay. People should know their formulas. Everyone should know that the quadratic formula is minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. People should also know things like cosine rules, such as like a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Even the SUVAT equations, which are new this year and are based on the topic in kinematics, which they took from A-level, but, you know, new GCSEs are hard. People should know those formulas, and I can't stress enough how important knowing these formulas are. Even if you're not that good at maths, even if you don't know how to revise maths well, or even if you're going crazy about maths, I promise you, learning those formulas off by heart will give you such an edge in the exam, because you will know exactly what formulas you need to use where, and you won't have to be looking back through your paper for formulas or stuff like that. You will just know it, and I promise you it will give you an edge in the exam, and you will thank me for it. Anyway, that's all I have for this week's video. I hope this helped you. Um, just click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you all later. cosine rule like a squared equals b squared plus c squared over no nope. <laughs> equals b over sine uh blah blah